Hello and welcome back to Sea Tide Garage. Today I'm going to continue on the Skoda and my dream for today is to actually fix the front brakes. The Skoda, maybe a bit surprisingly actually, got disc brakes on the front. Pretty much every car got that in the 80s but still the Skoda is known for being a bit crude but that's not the case on the braking system. Actually I was a bit surprised to see that it's a dual uh, piston set up on the caliber so that's pretty nice but what we are going to try to achieve today is to go from something like this to something like this let's get to work so the wheel is taken off the skoda and the brake caliber is exposed my plan for today is to change the brake line and hose the lines is down here and up here and the hose and take the caliber off and rebuild it and um, change the brake disc and that should be pretty much all for today that's the plan at least let's see how it goes and then it's just a matter of loosening the two balls back here like that like that Like that, it's off. And there we have the brake caliber on the bench. Then it's time to get some gloves on. I'm going to take it all apart. They're most likely very stuck. Heat lubrication and uh, time could help loosen these but I'm not going to reuse them so I don't really care if I shear them or anything like that there we go this one is loose once again you can see how little usage this car has been through because this is so clean in the frets. This is for sure the first time that this has been taken apart since it was brand new. That was one of them. Let's try to loosen this one over here. There we go. Like that. And then the last line is down here. Again, it's going a lot easier than I actually thought it would. Everything is coming apart nicely. This is a bit different experience than working on the on the Lancia, at least. This will shear the line, but it doesn't matter. It makes it a lot easier to take it out. And this should just be able to be pulled out like that. Now I'm going to try to remove these very rusty cutter pins, I think uh, the name are, that holds the brake caliber in place. Unfortunately, this one was the easy one, it seems, because the other one is not budging at all. It's moving. Aha. Nice. Let's see if we can get the Brake pads out right there. Pretty one. And the other one. Skoda. Original pad, I think. In the trash. 
Yes, I'm sorry. That is just the way it is. Can be reused, or it could actually, it could be rebuilt. But uh, I'm gonna take this part off, which is, uh, it's, it's actually a uh, twin caliber setup on the Skoda, which surprised me quite a bit because the car got a reputation of being a bit cheap. But uh, that's quite cool. And the one side of caliber can actually be taken off by four balls and um, removed from the rest of the caliber. So I'm gonna do that. Like that. And there you, we go, that was easy. It is loose, we can take it out. And taking the piston out of the caliber can be a very difficult task on a seized caliber. Um, one thing is to use the car and the braking system itself. You can actually remove the brake disc and, and the brake shoes and then use the brake on the car to actually force them out. Especially, that works especially good on, on a caliber with only one piston because then, then it only needs to pop one out. On a, a caliber with two pistons, it, it's a bit more complicated because when one of them pops out, it won't give any pressure for the other one. Another way is to use compressed air when the caliber is off the car. You can put pressure into the system and pop them out. That is a bit dangerous because it needs a lot of pressure. And because air is so good at compressing, it will actually shoot the piston out at a quite high velocity. And you need to make sure that nothing is hit or nothing is uh, squeezed between the calibers or that the, ca or the piston itself gets damaged because hitting a concrete wall or something like that. A couple of years ago, I actually accidentally had my fingers in between a 2CV caliber when I applied air pressure, which was a completely stupid thing. That resulted in the caliber clamping my fingers together and uh, then seizing again, so I couldn't get my fingers out. Luckily, I didn't break anything, but it was pure luck. Uh, so be careful using air. What I'm going to use today is a bit messy, but it works and it's very controlled. This bleeder screw that I had laying around and we'll fit that to the uh, to the caliber. That makes it possible to use this grease gun and then pump grease into the caliber and then by the hydraulic pressure forcing the uh, piston out. Yes, and as you can see, maybe I don't know if it picks up, the piston is beginning to move slowly but surely and there is no pressure on this so it's not going to pop out it is just being pushed out with grease like that and as stated this is quite filthy and now it's filled with grease that i have to dig out and clean out Off with that. And then we're going to clean this off, not the inside, but the outside with a wire brush, actually a wire wheel. Use eye protection for this, it's uh, really important. Then we're going to do the same with this one. Put some plugs in both sides and pop the piston out. And this is the best way that I have found to take out stock pistons. And I would like to know if there's any more clever way to do it because I'm not gonna use air anymore.
the experience with my hands, just uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But I think it's a shame to use all this good grease for this, so maybe there's a better way. Comment if you know a better way. And then we have the parts over here. I have now degreased both of them so they are nice and clean. And I have also changed my gloves to some uh, non-greasy gloves because now we're going to paint them. But before painting them, I'm going, going to remove the old seal. This is the seal that we're going to change when we rebuild it. Then I'm going to take some of this aluminum tape and pluck the holes that I don't want to, that I don't want paint in. And you will get in a minute why it needs to be aluminum tape. Some of you have maybe already guessed it. Like this. Then I'm going to take the piston again and put aluminum tape on the bottom end. Then I'm going to insert the piston until the aluminum foil is there. This is just to keep the paint out of the ball. And then we take these to the next station. And this is over here. Ta-da! So this is a power coating kit, uh, do-it-yourself cheap powder coating kit. So um, yeah, I won't go into much detail in this video because I think I will maybe make another one in the future. But And the result is pretty good, especially on uh, parts that are rusty and, and not smooth like these. So um, I'm going to do that. And then this is going to cook for 10 minutes and I'm going to leave the garage meanwhile because it's a bit toxic. So let's get ready to rebuild the caliber. It is now painted and uh, cooled off and it should be just a matter of fitting the new uh, seals, popping the pistons in, cleaning the pistons before and uh, yeah, reassembling everything. So let's get the aluminum tape out of the, of the ports. And I'm going to reuse these uh, pistons because they don't seem to uh, be that worn. But I need to clean the uh, ceiling edges. I'm using some steel wool to just rub all the grime and, and stuff off. And then I will take a seal and lubricate it well in brake fluid. You could use some uh, simply brake grease, but I don't have any. And this is all, all right as well. But you have to be careful not to tear the uh, rubbers when fitting the piston. Like that. And then I'm going to lubricate the inside. And it's very clean in here now. It should be. And then I take the piston that I have also cleaned. And then I should be able to just push it together. <clears throat> so we got it down a bit. I need to put the dust seal on now before putting it all the way in. It just fits in the groove of the piston. Oop. And then goes over top of this ledge. So now I have to push it down further like that. And then there is a little clippy thingy, springy thingy that keeps it all together. 
this, this is one piston done. Let's do the same to the other one. And there we go, it's in. Like that, the seal is in, that was difficult. Now the spring, there you go, we got it in. So the next step should actually be to fit the brake caliper thingy. And this one. And then a brand new uh, bleeder screw. Then we can put some brake pads in here. And then it's just the locking plate and the clips or the locking, whatever, cutter pin is the name, like that. And like that, and like that. There we have it, one rebuilt brake caliber for my wonderful Skoda 105. So let's fit a new brake disc. And actually the old brake disc is not that bad, but it's, yeah, I bought a new one. And it should be refaced, this one at least, so. It's going to be good. But to change the disc on, on this card seems, I haven't checked the manual because I don't have any, but it seems as though I will have to take this hub assembly off because it's bolted from the inside. And this is one of those nuts that are tightened very little. If you tighten it too much, it will crush the bearing. I really dislike those because it feels like feels so wrong to put a bolt on and not putting it on tight on, a, on your wheel because you don't want to lose your wheel, of course. But anyways, that is just the way it is, like that. Now we can peel, pull the entire assembly and bearing falls out. It looks pretty good, the bearing, so that's nice. So I put the assembly on the uh, workbench and then there are just four balls inside of here that we need to undo like that nice and then the new brake disc and of course clean the mating surface because if it's not put on straight it's going to wobble quite a lot when braking yes And then a very important step if you want your uh, brakes to actually work is to clean the new disc with brake cleaner because normally they are coated with, they are coated with a oil to prevent them from rusting. And that is not a ideal thing to get on your brake pads. And actually my plan was to repack the bearing with the with new grease, but uh, it looks brand new, so there is no reason to do that. I know it's not new, I know it's very old, but uh, I think it works fine. And then put the grease cap, which is packed with good old Czechoslovakian grease. I think that is most likely better than the stuff you can buy today. Maybe not that healthy or environmentally friendly, but yeah, I do care, but uh, it's produced. Why not use it? Like that. Wonderful. And then let's fit the caliber. I'm just gonna make it easier for myself and turn the wheel like that. You should be able to just slide this on like so. Taking the balls, which I have given some assembly grease because 
I want stuff to be able to go apart again in the future. Because maybe I'm going to keep this car forever ever. Who knows? And my plan today was to fix both front calibers because, yeah, because it would just make sense to fix both of them while I was at it and had my uh, powder coating kit out and all that. But something actually happened to the other caliber. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I didn't film it because I messed up on the... Uh, I did something wrong on the camera, so I didn't get it. But while taking the uh, bleeder screw out of the other caliber, I snapped it. Um, I did try to heat it up and all that before doing so, but it snapped. So I was pretty sure that I could uh, drill it out. I got some reverse drills and uh, I started drilling. And unfortunately, and it's going to be difficult to see, but the drill slid on me. So uh, I actually began to drill into the, uh, into the thread. That is not good. Um, I couldn't save the, the thread. There, there was no way. I could put another bigger thread into here, but that would, uh, but that would involve cutting a new seat for the, uh, for the bleeder screw for the bleeder screw to actually seal into. I don't have that kind of uh, tools. You could put, you could actually buy a repair kit to put in and put another screw inside of that, but that was extremely expensive. So firstly, I just thought I'm gonna buy some new calibers, but these are very rare, it turns out. And I cannot just buy something like this. The good part is that it's, uh, the caliber is, it's possible to take the caliber apart. So I could actually only buy this maybe, and then put on the old caliber because the rest of it is, uh, should be uh, rebuildable. I hope so. But I was very lucky and someone locally actually got a caliber uh, for this car where the bleeder screw is not stuck. So um, I have actually already bought that, but it has not arrived yet. So I'm still waiting on that. So I think I'm going to do the other caliber off camera when uh, the parts arrive, uh, because it's the same as the one I just did. But that means I will not be finished with the front brakes today. I will only be finished with, uh, with one side, I hope. So thank you for watching. It was a small step, but a very important step for the Skoda. And we are getting closer and closer to actually getting this car to actually work and drive. I'm still planning to have this car running within a month or something like that. I don't know if it's possible, but but if it continues as so, then I think it's pretty much uh, then I think it's possible because we just need to fix the rest of the brake and get the engine running a bit better. And there is some rust. I know the car seems very good, but there is a little bit of rust that needs to be fixed before going to the MOT and the tires need to be changed because they are 35 years old. So that's not so good. But if you like my videos, then please consider subscribing to my channel and also share my channels with others. That would mean a lot to me. Anyway, see you in the next one.